2 Kings chapter 7. 2 Kings chapter 7. Thank you. I want to quickly read verses 1 and 2, and then some few verses. Then Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord. Tomorrow about this time, a sea of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel, and two seas of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. So an officer on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Look, if the Lord will make windows in heaven, will this thing be? And he said, In fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Take note of this. Tomorrow, at this time, about this time, a sea of flour shall be sold for a shekel, and two seas of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. There was famine at this time in Samaria of Israel. There was famine, and the word of the Lord came, and the economic advisor of the king rebuffed it and said, no, it's not possible. But then the word of the Lord came through the man of God. In fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Verse 12. Then the king arose in the night and said to his servants, let me now tell you what the Syrians have done to us. They know that we are hungry, therefore they have gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying, when they come out of the city, we shall catch them alive and get into the city. Verses 14 to 16. Therefore, they took two chariots with horses, and the king sent them in the direction of the Syrian army, saying, go and see. And they went after them to the Jordan, and indeed all the road was full of garments, and weapons which the Syrians had thrown away in their haste. So the messengers returned and told the king. Then the people went out and plundered the tent of the Syrians. So a sea of fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two seas of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. Verses 19 to 20. Then, the, then that officer had answered the man of God and said, Now look, if the Lord will make windows in heaven, could such a thing be? And he had said, In fact, you shall see it with your eyes, or you shall not eat of it. Verse 20, And so it happened to him. For the people trampled him in the gate, and he died. So, Father, we thank you for the entrance of your word. Give light and understanding to the simple. We receive the word of God today. Amen. We're in a time of economic hardship and time of struggle, economic, economical struggle for some. But we look up unto you, O God, from where our help comes from. Our help does not come from the economic advisor, but comes from God that controls the economy. Lord, for as many that are struggling financially at this time, struggling to pay their mortgage, struggling to even enter the property market, or for those struggling to get a job, or struggling to get promotion in any, any area of their lives, as we hear the word of God today, Give them direction. Amen. And let them come back with testimony. Amen. In Jesus' name. Syrians have attacked Samaria and there was famine in Samaria. Doesn't that sound familiar? But then there was a divine direction on behalf of Israel at this time. 
very quickly what happens in a divine intervention. Can we still express divine intervention in our lives today? God visited his people. And in this case, he defended them. Is anybody struggling financially at this time? Of course, it's an obvious question, but you know what I mean when you're really struggling. Or is your business fortune on a cliff, on a cliff edge? Israel found herself many times like this. And I've looked at the Bible, I have seen that even in famine time, only few people thrived, especially when God stepped in to their situation. God will step in for you. But before God can step in, the people have to step out with God by faith. My title of the message is Step Out in Faith. Step Out in Faith. Verse 1. If you notice what happened there, then Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow about this time. I've never seen a God that is so interested in the affairs of man, especially God that is interested in the welfare of his people. Never you think that God is not interested in your welfare or your well-being. But I've come to encourage someone today that the God that will serve is not a dead God. The God that will serve is responsive to pain. He knows your pain. Elisha said, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, tomorrow about this time, a sea of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel. Those are the currency of those days, but you can get an idea that there's going to be a lot of discount here. And two seas, two seas of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. At the epic center of famine, the very place where people experience famine, God word came. And God said, tomorrow, about this time, that will be abundant. For the economic officer, it sounded too simplistic, too good to be true. And I believe today there are many economic officers in the church. But it happens when you hear the word of God that way, you kind of belittle it and said, mm -mm, maybe, maybe not. But let's look at this origin of miracles. That it is, was true. There was famine. But at the same time, the word of God came as a solution to the time, to the people in need. What brought about a divine, the divine intervention? How did we even know? Or how can you know if a divine intervention is likely going to happen in your own case? What gave it away? What can give away the bathing of a divine intervention? The Bible says, Elijah said, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord. What gave it away as a divine intervention instrument here was number one, the word of the Lord was present. 
where the word of a king is, there is power. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4. The lion has roared. We will not fear. The Lord God has spoken. We will not prophesy. Amos chapter 3, verse 8. Amos chapter 3, verse 8. The New Living Translation of the Bible says, The Sovereign Lord has spoken. So who can refuse to proclaim his message? In other words, where the word of God is present, this is, is the telltale sign that God will intervene. Wherever the word of God is present, and you hear it, this is a telltale sign that a divine intervention will likely take place there. In Luke chapter 5, Luke chapter 5, verses 4 to 6, there was a time of need for a man called Simon. Luke chapter 5, and Jesus came there, verses 4 to 6, now, when he had stopped speaking, Jesus, Jesus said to him, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. So he was a fisherman, ran out of fish, was tired, was packing up his net for that day. But Jesus gave an instruction, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, that is Simon and his crew members, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. There was a divine intervention. What gave it away? The word of God was present. These are the telltale sign. Or oh, this is the telltale sign that a divine intervention will take place. Where the word of God is present, God is there. Word of God comes when the word of God comes to you. If you recognize that this is the word of God, step out in faith. So every day, try and listen for the word of God. Let that be your guide to experiencing a divine intervention. Has God changed? The same God yesterday, today, and forever. In 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 2, 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 2, that we started with, so an officer on whose hand the king leaned. What does that mean? It means that he was a powerful man whose word is powerful. He was an advisor to the king, as we have heard. And he doesn't get it wrong. Very good with facts and figures. You, does that ring a bell? They are good with statistics. They will tell you the percentage. They are good with economic forecasts. They will tell you everything. And rightly so. The Bible says, whose hand the king leaned. A Bible translation reads the same verse. It says, then the captain, the king's right hand man. The king's right hand man. Do you have a right hand man? Or a right hand woman? It says the captain, 
the king's right-hand man, responded to the man of God and said, with all his economic acumen, he said, look, even if the Lord were to make windows in heaven, could this really happen? When I look at the, what happened to this man later, as you have heard, my advice to anyone is that be careful who your right hand man is or who your right hand woman is. They can lead you astray if they are not spiritual. Because it's been proven, isn't it? It's good to be good. I mean, it's, it, it's a good thing to be good with facts and figures, with statistics. But well, even with the statistics, doesn't the weather people, weather man, doesn't they get it wrong? But well, God cannot get it wrong. Amen? So every day of my life, as I read the Bible, I pay careful attention, listening for the voice of God, for that word of God that will give me insight into what to do next. At such a time like this, you don't need the right hand man. All you need is the word of God. In 1 Kings chapter 19, leave him, don't worry. In 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 9, I read from the New International Version of the Bible. There he went into a cave and spent the night. We're talking about Elijah. He was running away from the woman that has issued a death warrant on his life. Elijah, the prophet of God, was hiding in a cave because he was afraid of his life. That tells you that even today, men of God, women of God, we are not immune from threats to our lives. And some really, they will run for their lives when the robber meets the road. But the, the Elijah really needed a word from God. Because when is the best time that you really need a voice from God at your low point, isn't it? Yes, and we've all been there. Low point. Just as it is now. Don't be afraid of those points in your life. Two things can happen. You can either remain there or even go lower, or you can use it as to ascend. I believe as you hear this word, the latter shall be for you. You will ascend. It's the last Sunday of the month that we call September, a month whereby you take a step to remember, a step that will change the whole case, the step that will turn things around for you for the better. As believers, this is the time to listen for the word of God. As in God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews 13. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And in that 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 9, that we started with, the second part says, and the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? When God asks questions that are personal, and it's obvious, but those questions are specific to a man or a woman, it means that God wants you to pay attention to your location. Where was Elijah at this time? In the cave. And God said, where, what are you doing here? Elijah finally got the voice of God to, directed to him. Because all along, 
He did not hear any word from God. God's words came to him at the low point. Verse 2. Pardon me. Number 2. The ingredient that will make you to know, to prepare for a divine intervention. I said the first one is what? The word of God must be present. Number two, not only must the word of God be present as a telltale sign for you to get ready for a divine intervention, you must make room for the word of God. Be ready to listen for the word of God. Elijah was in a cave. Everything was quiet. Or was he not in a good place? He locked himself up. He was hiding, but you cannot hide from God. He was hiding from Jezebel, but God was with him. Never you think God is not with you in your low point. If you desire a breakthrough, brothers and sisters, find a quiet place and listen for the voice of the Lord on a daily basis. I always, I have a, an altar in the house, a study, where I lock myself up. Or I use the toilet. Step out in faith. The word of the Lord came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? God knew that Elijah was afraid. At times, there will be some things that will make you fear. It's okay. But at the same time, don't let it linger on. Then it will not be okay. Fear is a natural response. But you have to deal with it. Because God has not given us a spirit of fear. But of love, of power, and sound mind. Today, many believers are hiding because they are afraid for their lives. Usually, the first step is very arduous. But if you have courage and you step out by faith and take the first step, all that subsequent steps will be nothing. God knew Elijah was afraid. Somebody is here, you are afraid to take the first step. I will say, listen very well to God and step out in faith. Jesus said, you will lose it. In other words, many people are hiding because they are afraid of their lives. But Jesus said, you will lose that life. Or if, you, if you've lost it, he said you will find it. Matthew 16, verse 25. Matthew 16, verse 25. I read from the New International Version. For whoever wants to save their life, will what? Will lose it. Don't be afraid to take that first step. Because the same thing you are afraid to do, you don't want to ruffle the feather, you will lose it eventually. It says, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life, for me, will do what? Will find it. There's nothing you ever sacrifice for the Lord, that because God has said it, I'm going to step out in faith with God. That step, you risk that thing, but you will find it. Is God saying that recklessness is permitted? No. It's not recklessness, but responsibility that is permitted. God wants us to be responsible for each step that we take. 
The New Living Translation of that same verse 25 says, if you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. Remember, it's saying, whatever you give up for the sake of obeying God, you will find it. That's what it's saying. Today, many lives have been lost because people are not stepping out in faith with the Lord. You can still make that business. You can still achieve that, that goal this year. You can still pass that exams. You can still get that job. You can still get the mortgage. Yes. You can still make a proposal to that woman, you can. Regardless of what the family members are saying, fear has a grip. The Bible says fear is a torment. Don't let fear torment you any longer. Enough is enough. Say to yourself, enough is enough. You know, you wake up in the morning with a holy heart, yeah? What am I doing here for God's sake? What am I doing here? And you are looking at the mirror. If there is God, and if I am a child of God, what am I doing here? In the name of Jesus, let every grip of evil in my life be broken. I want to move out. Maybe that's what you need. There's a bad devil. But devil will always, will always answer to the name of Jesus. Oh. Amen? Amen? Don't be afraid. Fear, the fear, the grip of fear can be broken. 2 Timothy 1 7 said, God has not given us, isn't it? The spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. And every fear, every spirit submit to God. Always take hold of whatever is gripping you and say, in the name of Jesus, I break that hold. Let's go back very quickly to 1 Kings 19, verse 11. And there he went into a cave, verse 11, pardon me. Verse 11. Then he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. Who is talking? God is talking to who? Elijah. Where was Elijah at this time? Please follow it uh, carefully. Elijah was in the cave for the fear of his life. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. God said, get out. Stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. For the Lord is about to pass by. You see, when God is about to do anything, it's like a river of water. It flows. If you don't jump into it at that time, I need to wait for another time. So when the river gets in front of you and you know God, the word of God has come to you, that's the time to take it a, a deep dive. Amen? But look at it. It was in the cave and the word of God came to Elijah. Get out. But look what, what happened. Then, a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. How come the wind came just about the same time that God commanded Elijah to get out? That was his distraction. And it came with a very fear, fearsome force. 
How come God was not in the wind? God was not in the wind because the wind was not from God. But the wind answered to God, you know. God used the wind as a messenger. After the wind, there was what? An earthquake. When the Lord had just told someone to get out of the cave, the wind was not able to stop him. I mean, to, the wind was there to stop him from coming out. And then a earthquake came again. Some people say this natural event at uh, act of God is because they do not they do not have a meaning they do they don't understand it. Is it? The wind came, and then the earthquake verse twelve. After the earthquake came what? A fire. So the Lord was not in the earthquake. The Lord was not in the wind. They caused a lot of stir. Have you seen it? A lot of things happening just to get your attention and take your attention away from what God said you should do. Verse 12. After the earthquake came what? A fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. When I was still doing disco, I remember that song that we used to sing. You know, the, from this band, I think they called The Wind, The Earthquake, and Fire. How many people remember those ones? That was in 1979, I believe. Yeah. Hello, am I, am I the only one that did disco here? You know, I used to be a disco dancer, break dancer at that time. You know? So I remember that one. The moment I saw that in the Bible, I remember that band. That's where they got their name from. And after the fire came, a gentle whisper. All along, where is Elijah? He's still in the cave. There's so many distractions that stop this man and put him in the cave. The devil is still using things around you to keep you where you belong. To keep you on that check, fear is one of it. You are not beautiful. You are not good. All those things, but you are good. You are beautiful. You are handsome. You look into the mirror and say to yourself, I will make it in this life, regardless of the opposition. I will make it in the name of Jesus. Every hindrance is around my life in the name of Jesus. I command to break. It will happen because you will always have whatever you say. Is a spiritual principle. Don't give up on yourself. Turn somebody and say, don't give up on yourself. It is true. You need this word. Don't give up on yourself. In this month, you will take the step that you will never forget. Amen. It will be the best step you have ever taken. Things will turn around for you. I said things will turn around for you. But do you see this Elijah's case? Elijah had not come out yet. Then we have these three major natural events that happened. But God was not in them. Is this ringing a bell to you? Every attempt you make, rightly so, is met with severe opposition. You know that this wind, the earthquake and fire, there were oppositions. But God was not there. God did not bring them, but they all answered to God. There are messengers of God. And one messenger cannot stop another messenger from obeying God. You get that? 
one messenger cannot stop another messenger from coming out of the cave. Do you understand? Whatever messenger that is working against you, they cannot stop you. They will not stop you. If you believe that, say, I believe that. Verse 13. When Elijah heard it, the voice of God, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Elijah was no longer afraid. Amen? The third thing that you will need for divine intervention, not only must the word of God be present for you to act, and that every day you find a quiet place to listen for the quiet voice of the word of God to you in that situation. God will not do anything that concerns you independent of you. He will address that situation. So you listen for his voice in that situation. Number three, thing that you need to pass your own divine intervention is to get rid of the distractions. Get rid of the distractions. Remember one messenger of God cannot disturb another messenger of God from obeying God. Step out in faith. I think we should stop here. Step out in faith. Let us pray. I think, let's stand up and pray. If you are married or if you have a partner together, why don't you hold your hands together and pray over that situation. And if you have no one, your spouse is not here, but your child is here, you hold somebody for confirmation, for the fact that we are here together. Now, the Bible says, whatever the two of you shall agree, as touching anything that we shall ask of the Father, it shall be done. Open your mouth and ask God together. Ask God in his presence right now. Let that mountain crumble before you. Let the wind stop. Let the earthquake calm. Let fire stop. In the name of Jesus, if they did not stop Elijah from coming out of the cave, they will not stop you from obeying God. For one messenger of God cannot stop the other messenger of God from obeying God. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, whatever is used against you at this time, they will answer to the voice of the name of God. They will answer to the name of Jesus. I command clarity of vision, clarity of purpose in the name of Jesus. Every entanglement against your life against your destiny in the name of Jesus that is not of God. I command them to be broken in the name of Jesus. In this month, you will take a step to remember. A step to remember. Step out in faith. Step out with God in faith in the name of Jesus. It shall be well with you. 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 In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Lord, I bless you. Let's begin to thank you. Begin to thank you. The Lord has sent his word. Great is the company of them that publish it. Lord, we bless you. Thank you for the confirmation of your word. Let your people go from here. Lord, to take a step of faith step of faith with you together, let them achieve their goals. Let them come back with testimony of the great things that the Lord have done in their lives. So shall it be. In Jesus' holy and anointed name we pray. Let's clap those hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
we bless you, we honor you, we give you praise. In Jesus' holy name, we pray. Amen. Take your seat. Elder Chidoze, it's your turn to take off for today. Let's clap for Elder Chidoze. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Elder Chidoze is going to take offering for us. 